Hi guys, I have designed the new version of my smart door window sensor and as you can see finally the power consumption is perfect. The power consumption of this new version of smart door sensor is very low. I measure the current with the power profiler kit by Nordic and I know the current detected is below the measurement range of the power profiler. I have done several tests to verify the accuracy of the data, in any case the accuracy of the data the consumption will be under 200 nanoampere and this is a very good result considering the similar device at a power consumption of 6-8 microampere. Now do you want to know how I developed this smart device? So guys, let's get started. This project is possible with the help of PCBWay and yes, this project is sponsored by PCBWay. You can buy your PCBs for only $5, check the link below to place your first order. This video series was created to show you that many of smart devices that are out there are not designed well and that it only takes a little to make them better products. The first things I did was to choose a smart device to redesign and I decided to redesign a very simple smart door window sensor. You will understand that this device most of the time is in deep sleep mode or standby mode so reducing its power consumption during this mode can greatly increase battery life. In deep sleep mode, this device consumes an average between 6 and 8 microampere. By powering this device with two AAA alkaline batteries, the manufacturer claims an average battery life is about 1 and 2 years. Honestly, I don't know if it's true, uh, in particular with Wi Fi version. My goal is to extend the life of this device even longer. You may wonder why. For only two reasons for now. The first one is to reduce the battery replacement, and the second reason is to improve the user experience of this smart device. So, using the My Controller Deep Sleep mode is not a very good idea because it does not allow us to maximize the power consumption. The only alternative I know is to develop an external power latch to turn on the My Controller only when needed. In addition, we need to use only components that are easy to find, so not particular complex integrated circuit like TPL by Texas Instrument. In this way, we avoid possible shortage problems. The power latch I need to develop should start the My Controller only when the signal from the read switch goes from high to low and vice versa. So, as you can understand, the way it works is different compared to a simple IoT button. So, we can't use a classic power latch like this. The new power latch needs to know the previous state of the sensor by comparing it with the current state. So, I could use a different flops to store the previous state. As you can see, the solution works. But the problem is to generate the clock signal of the flip-flops, which would be require some microampere and extra components. And since our goal is to reduce the power consumption, this solution is not the best for low power application. The operating state of the power latch reminds me a true table of a logic gate. And yes, I'm talking about the XOR. After some testing and research, I found a solution to store the bit the, the state, the previous state, with two XOR. I found this circuit. The configuration of the XOR in this circuit is very interesting, but not complete from my point of view. I found an open source project on GitHub that used the same circuit. The problem with this solution is the power consumption still remaining too high. This is because the output signal from the logic gates is used to activate the enable of the LDO. Why not use a MOSFET directly? And the efficient current of the LDO consumes some microampere and this is a waste of energy. So starting from this circuit I designed this. And this is the schematic of the project, in particular I want to show you the power latch. As you can see the circuit consists of several components, 
like you can see, there are even more components than necessary to perform some tests. The circuit is designed to work with different configurations, in particular with different type of batteries, like AAA, alkaline or LiPo battery. Since I plan to use two AAA batteries, I don't even need the LDO. I also added Bosch BME 680 to detect the temperature, humidity and air quality whenever the door or window is opened and closed. And this is the PCB render. So this version is not as a modular design as previous version because I try to simplify the design of the device as much as possible. Now it's time to assemble the first prototypes. As you can see, the quality of the PCBs is perfect and also the PCBs is only 0.8 mm of thickness. Instead, this is the case I designed for this device. I did not use screws to simplify the design. I printed this case with my 3D printer. If you don't have a 3D printer, I recommend you to try PCBWay new service that for a few dollars you can print your own parts with different materials. Ok guys, this is the final result of this first prototype. I'm very happy of this final result. It's not bad, the design. So guys, let's get see in detail the first prototype. I have printed this in PLA, plastic white, as you can see. So in here we have the magnet with the object's logo. If I, exactly, you, as you can see the red LED is on and then off. Perfect. I now simulate the open door and closed door. It's work. Perfect. Okay, now I can open the case in this way. So with my finger, perfect. I can open the case. So here we have the two AAA batteries. Uh, for now, they are not alkaline, but it's only for a test. So I can remove the batteries in this way. Okay, to remove this, so the socket of the battery, I can press here and perfect. I can remove this. So here we have the external cover of the product of the of this device and here we have the PCBs. After soldering the uh, two terminals, two battery terminals, I can't remove these uh, uh, PCBs from here, from this plastic. Uh, for now it's in this way, the design, but um, if you open all um, smart door sensor, they are built in this way for this reason. So uh, I can use two cables, but in this way, the design, uh, the final result is better, in my opinion. By the way, you can't uh, remove the um, easily. You can't uh, remove easily the the PCBs. So to program this, I use this. As you can see, we have uh, six pogo ping. You can find this on AliExpress or Amazon, I don't know. So after connect the Pogo pin, here we have my serial custom bridge. 
serial bridge so by objects <laughs> always so um, in this way we are ready to program and debug uh, this sensor it's so easy um, maybe I can improve this I don't know how maybe uh, remove this piece of plastic here in this way it's more easy to uh, put uh, the pogo pin but for now it works so guys let's get started with the upload the firmware the firmware i uploaded is a simple test to make sure the hardware is working properly in the next video i will show you how to integrate this sensor with amazon aws iot core i also wanted to show you some measurement i made with my oscilloscope and power provider as you can see, the circuit seems to be working properly. So, in conclusion, there are many things that can be improved, such as the reset button, because now don't work properly. I could improve the design of the project and reduce the size of the device, or change the my controller like NRF by Nordic. Below in the description, you can find the link to the repo of the project. Please let me know if you like the project. And thank you again to PCBWay for sponsoring this project. And thank you for watching until the end and see you later next time.